Um, we were just uh, on our way to Sayers, but um, had to give this place a visit as we were going going past. And behind us, oh, look at that. I don't know if that shows up, but there's a rainbow going straight down the centre. Wow. I'll take a photo of that, see if it comes out any clearer. Delville Wood, or Devil's Wood as it was called. You can see there the craters everywhere, look. There in front of you. And the buzzard there getting a bit of a ticking off by the crows. a monument just in front there. Some places are fenced off because of uh, work they're doing or areas have been uncleared or Rotten Row, that's called. Let's see if we can walk. It'd just be probably because of the maintenance work going on. It looks like they've planted new grass seeds along there. So we'll go and have a look and uh, look at the monument that's over there. It has to be said, it's a beautiful memorial. This tree saw all the war. It makes you wonder if all them little indentations, you know, all the different uh, sort of disfigurements and growths, makes you wonder if they were caused by gunfire. There you have it, the tree that survived the war. That's a perfect example of landscape, which is the battleground which has been grown over. You can see the undulating shapes of the soil there, all the way along to there. And then right the way along to in front of me there. These are all the trench names, that's why these markers have been there. So. Princess Street and then Buchanan Street would have led along there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this way, yeah. Oh. 
that would have been a shallow trench. I mean, obviously, I know it's filled in a lot there, so and the trench spread that way onto there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we're now walking through this shallow trench, I'm basically walking in the footsteps of the uh, soldiers that fought here. The whole trench. Wow. There's no depth for that. Yeah. Yeah, walk the trench. Yeah. Down to here. Advancing in a northeasterly direction at 7 a.m. on the 15th of July 1916, the attacking force of the South African Infantry Brigade entered Devilwood at this point. And then obviously down that way, isn't it? Advancing down there to the yeah. Yeah, you can picture, can't you? The troops going forward. You look at the amount of the uh, impact craters all around there as well wow some of these are huge yeah Yeah, look at that. As they catch the autumn sun, as the markers seem to stand out like ghosts. There we are, just spotted the memorial on the main road. So it says in October 2003, the remains of three soldiers were found in this spot. And then they were repatriated, but it looks like they could identify the King's own Royal Lancashire Regiment. That's where we're headed, that's the uh, Sayers Cemetery number one, and that's the French cemetery there. Catching the sun nice on there. Yes, yeah, tidy, isn't it? Oh, it's attack the enemy lines. The Sayers, the French troops had done in 1915. Many of these men, known and unknown, now lie in the cemeteries and fields nearby. That's the cemeteries that we visited yesterday. And this is the Sars or Sayers Cemetery. Down the register. Let's have a little look at that. Private Andrew Aitken from fellow Coatbridge men, lest we forget. Oh, stick that back in there. So 
So a little bit about the battle for 14 battery um, in this area. <clears throat> On my phone there, it shows where we are at the cemetery here and then the gun just up there. Um, I'll put a picture of this on the screen in case it's not clear. So that's Serre Le Puissou and if I tap on the gun there and then enlarge that we get a little explanation of what was going on in this area for them. <clears throat> so the 10th of November 14 battery registered its guns at this location to zero and had a perfect fall of shot and an OP was established at Billy Bois and the uh, the Fu or the forward observation officer had to be moved after being shelled out of the area. Uh, firing was also hampered this part of the year by bad weather and also a shortage of rounds so uh, fatigue parties repaired the horse standings that they had up there. This was at uh, Hamo Farm where they were based. Um, they exchanged guns because uh, some of their guns were damaged um, and 114th battery was actually switched into the modern 60 pounders and 14 battery supported the French troops using the 4.7 shells but in a, they also became very scarce so they were unable to do so and, and continue support um, and then the rest of it uh, became sort of a quiet uh, time until they could actually uh, engage again and then what they did is they borrowed the 60 pounders off 114 uh, sorry 100 and, yeah 114th battery and um, and continue to support the Battle of Sayers that way. So, yeah, we're going to investigate this and to see what it actually is, because that that's definitely a clip of some kind, isn't it, there? Yes. And that's got a hole. Answers to our questions. Go on then, Terry. So oh. the lever and the safety pin. Yeah, so what was it actually called then? Uh, oh, so, yeah, it's a mortar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Good grief. And it's complete. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So that was a mortar round that we yeah. just found there. Wow. So we know that the mortar batteries were here, yes. don't we? Look at the land that they got. Yeah. There we are, says so number three. Dramatically smaller than its counterparts, isn't it? When you think that number two's got over 7,000 in. Let's have a look at these. Yeah, Lancashire Regiment, Royal Lancasters. Yeah, there's quite a few for the 2nd of July. Well, there's a couple there, look. Yeah, 2nd of July. Lancashire's. Yorkshire. And then of course 13th of November and of course the like, beginning of July and towards the end of November was two busy battle periods wasn't it for the... Yeah. Right. It'll be uh, bunnies, bunnies getting in. So to the Accretion Pals. So many fell here on the 1st of July.
We've, lo oh, see, we've watched lots of documentaries about the PALS battalions and how they started up and why they started up, but to actually see things now where they they actually fought. I mean, that actually looks like it was a, a trench system there, look, all the way along. So it looks like some of this battlefield's been preserved. This is the Sheffield Memorial. So we'll go and have a... And there's the battalions. Land here, and you can see. Look there, the little shell craters look dotted about. There's a cross there. Let's see what kind of significance that has. Private A. E. Bull killed on this spot, July 14th, 1916 and he was found on the 13th of April 1928 and he's buried at Sarah Road Cemetery number no. 2 which is where we're parked at the moment where the vans are parked Private Bull yeah. Look at this ground here now. And there you go. Wow. It's all shell. So this one's Railway Hollow Cemetery. Again, similar size to the uh, cemetery we've just visited. Again, look, Lancashire. Yorkshire regiments. Let's just have a quick look and see who's put this down. See if we can read it. Ah, yeah, they landed with their faces forward. Yeah. It's a, a familiar verse. Gordon Highlanders. These <coughs> crosses are French soldiers. Louis Lassard, soldier of the 64th, I'm guessing Rifle Brigade or Rifle Infantry or something, died for France, 7th and 6th, 15. And uh, Georges Palvadou, again, same date of death, 93rd Rifle. Uh, 
there's a track there that goes up. So if this was railway hollow, I mean, I wonder. See, that, that landscape there has got like a ridge across it. And I wonder if that was like an old railway track that went across here, you know, and continued along. Sheffield one. There we go. Luke Copps Cemetery. Oh, wow. Near the blue tits and birds singing. It's a very almost personal, isn't it? As if there's more to come. Oh, look at the birds there. So we've driven uh, outside, the, the village of Soestra is that way and um, the other village, excuse my pronunciation, I'll put the spell in the village of Foncoville is this way. Now the 14 battery brought the guns this in this direction along this track, along this road here and then they positioned the guns right here all the way along and they put all of the guns in those positions all the way along there with the guns facing that direction which is sort of Gomer Court direction there the, the thing that uh, was noticeable is that the the guns when they were firing because they weren't on the lip or the brow of a hill if you look at the landscape there you can see it's pretty flat so when the guns were firing it was easy for the German artillery to see the guns in this position and see the flash um, coming from the barrels so it meant that they could get a fix on them so it was a bit of a, a test you know a bit of a nervous time for the for 14 battery here but this is the spot, this is where we know for a fact that uh, our great-grandfather was here. He stood here somewhere, just behind were the support lines with the rounds and the guns were in position all the way along this part of the field here. Wouldn't this be a place to find an artillery cap badge, eh? That would be absolutely amazing. But yeah, this is where this is where our great grandfather fought, right here. You feel like you're really connecting with history there. <laughs> <laughs> 